Okay, everybody, hopefully this is coming out right. I'm gonna do a video that, uh, this is gonna be in the beginning here. I'm just gonna go over this whole video. So ultimately what this is for is installing a dump valve on a power glide transmission and setting it up for a 4G63 rear wheel drive compound turbo with a GT30 journal bearing and a GT45, like the eBay specials. Um, as a second one but the whole gist of this is to show you how to install a dump valve that's later in the uh afterwards and you'll probably hear some rambling and i'll probably try to edit it to be decent but i just figured i'd put this together to show the results because a lot of times what happens is i've seen guys will post there's a couple of guys only two that i've seen showing how to do to put a dump valve set up together there's a home a do-it-yourself deal and uh, then they don't really show the results on it. And a lot of times when they do show results, they have a you know a big cubic inch engine that's gonna spool a turbo anyway. And they're using it for say other purposes of for the softening up a shift or something like that. They'll, they can control it to dump some converter pressure before the shift or somewhere thereabouts just to kind of to where it'll loosen up the converter and not hit the engine so hard on the shift which i may end up doing eventually too i don't even know what this thing's dropping to i haven't even ran it out to know but i'm gonna i'm gonna show you some logs right now and what i'm going to point out on all these logs i have uh let's see four of them here and i found probably the best examples that i could find and to be honest with you, I think all of them that are pre-dump valve are, a, they kind of have a little bit of a better uh, situation for uh, getting the converter. Uh, it, it was up to temperature already in those is what I mean. Whereas when I, this test that I did with the dump valve, the engine, you know, it was up to temp slightly, the transmission was pretty much dead cold on the first start. This is the second tr test. So it's going to loosen up even further than this. So just to kind of get that out of the way that it's going to be better than what I'm showing you here. But I got such good results out of this that I figured I would show it in comparison to my uh, the previous ones without nitrous and then I did one with nitrous and then I just did one with nitrous today however I don't really like that one too much because that bottle is almost empty at very minimum it wasn't purged and you can see that it goes pretty rich in the uh, the log but it still works really well but the reality is I just don't need nitrous now so it's pretty awesome but anyway let me show you the logs real quick first of all and then I'll get on to the videos, try to edit out. I know there's gonna be a lot of rambling, I'm sorry. And I'm very I'm sorry, big time, for having the phone turned the wrong direction. Hopefully I can fix that. But if not, unfortunately, you'll just have to bear with it. And I think this is a good video to show people how to do a do-it-yourself dump valve on a power glide transmission and what the results are. And this is gonna be mostly for these guys that are running little four cylinders that that have a big a lot of problems uh this converter is pretty tight it only stalls up to about 26 2700 before it really bogs it down it takes forever to even get to 3000 so i want to want to kind of go over that in this in these videos in this uh these logs and show you that but uh, I, I've been setting everything just to precursor everything. I've been setting it to basically atmosphere when it hits like 0.2. I'm just measuring from 0.2 to when it hits like 52, 5300 RPM. That way I have a pretty good gauge of what we're doing. Nitrous, no nitrous, all that. But anyway, here's where we'll start. Okay, first of all, we're gonna go with, uh, this is with zero nitrous, zero dump valve, starting at, and the one thing that this did have, I was just trying to find logs and they're not all labeled. When I do all these uh, transbreak tests, I don't label them, unfortunately. But this was a pretty good representation. The only difference on this one was I went ahead and this had a 10 degree retard on it. Um, but that doesn't really matter because it doesn't come in until the chip hits anyway. And so I wanna I want to see show you, well, maybe maybe that isn't a good, well, anyway, let's just go over it and I'll show you because all of them have been taking almost 10 seconds 
That's where I, I just want to use that as a mark. It's almost 10 seconds from start to finish. So as of right now, this one is starting at basically atmosphere and then it goes to, this is about 5,300. I could go a little less, but that's 9.58 seconds, okay? That's a long time to be on the trans brake. If I go from when I hit the throttle to when I hit 5,300, uh, it's pretty much 10.5 seconds, okay? So that's that's no nitrous, just stall. I have a bunch of these. I just can't find them for some reason I was trying, but you gotta go through 100 logs that are unlabeled. So this was the best I could come up with right now. Uh, I know they're about 10 seconds just by looking at them. So, okay. Now let's go to dump valve test, no nitrous. So this is basically at 0 0.02 atmosphere, atmosphere as possible, and then got to 5,300. It took, uh, boy, it stopped my thing right there. Let's go back real quick. Okay, 3.59 seconds. Now that's with no burnout, no warm up, really of the tranny. I did, I did do a, a trans brake test prior to this just to kind of, you know, get it warmed up a little bit because that warms up the transmission pretty good. But it's only 173 degrees. And to be honest with you, this thing gets up to 160 pretty darn quick and then it takes a while. So this, this is uh, the total log, I don't even know, but this is 223 seconds after it was fired up to give you an idea of that. If I just go here, it shows me 299 seconds, whatever that divides out to. So it's not even a few minutes. Um, yeah, 360 would be six minutes. So it's not even, it's really not even uh, five minutes, I guess I'd say. This is five minutes of runtime. Um, engines not, you know, it was dead cold. First start of the day, everything, okay? And so that is pretty darn quick when you look at it. So you're basically 0.02, try to use that just because and it gives me a good idea of like I'm not you know like from dead stop you just never know what what the air density is for the start of the day uh, and then to get to 5300 pretty close to 5300 right there this shows 4.5 seconds so oh no it hit it earlier that's that's got the chip on right there so so 50 oh yeah yeah we're 5,300, yeah, it hits pretty darn quick, actually, 52, so 5,300 right there, 3.3, 3.32 seconds, no nitrous, and the one thing is it takes, it takes quite a while, what I, if you look, it'll go, like, there, it's 1,500, that's when I first hit it, it takes, it stops right around, usually it'll stop right here at, and I can find an older log, at some point but it goes you can just see the difference of how quickly it just gets through and as soon as it builds boost it, it once it built boost even on the other one it would go pretty fast but now it's like the total time of this was 5.4 seconds so 5.4 seconds i can stage and bump in at any race i want to with that so i'm very happy with that now this is my last uh launch at the track and this is kind of the same representation and it was, oh man, I just hit it and it messed me up. Uh, yeah, point, let's see, 0 0.07, 0 0.07, 1 point, okay. So right about here is the start to get to the chip. With, now this is with nitrous. Um, it's about 3.46 seconds. So ultimately that dump valve gave me almost identical to what I did with a 30 shot of nitrous. To it or 50 maybe it's a 50 shot it's a 30 jet and then this is with nitrous with no purge meaning that i did not purge the bottle um maybe i just i just came up on it real once just to click it but just to kind of give you an idea of the difference here this from the same scenario is 2.879 seconds so I can get on, if I had nitrous on it, obviously it, it went from, you know, four and some seconds or whatever it is, or 3.8 seconds to 2.8 seconds. So the whole point of it is that 
Now with the dump valve, I'll be able to, and I haven't even played with timing. I haven't done anything trying to maximize the fuel because usually I just handicap it with nitrous. And you can see in this log, actually, if you look right here, you look at this purple line. If you see this purple line right here, follow the mouse. This purple line is the wideband, right? And you can see with the nitrous on, this bottle is almost empty. It goes real rich. It goes down to 11.6. And usually when I'm on this, I try to run it right around 12.5, 12.6 at these RPMs. And it's, uh, it's calling for 10.8 air fuel ratio because I have it added in. I have some fuel added in there. But so it's, actually, it's a little bit rich than richer than what I would normally expect. Usually I would be right around here to here and then it would it would stay about that lean and then shut off. Um, but so you could tell the nitrous wasn't pursed out. So anyway I'm gonna I'm gonna get back to this. I'm gonna edit this video out real quick for y'all. I do think this is gonna be very beneficial for a lot of the four cylinder guys that uh that are probably gonna struggle with uh, getting a converter to work uh because I have, I've, you know, working with different converters, I've tried, and then, you know, you're spending a ton of money dealing with converters, and this is not that hard. All in, with the valve, the fittings, and everything, I, I would bet that I have maybe a hundred bucks, maybe if that, with, uh, with the, uh, the fittings, uh, and I show all the fittings that I use, I show how I route them, I show everything, and, and what I do to do it, so this at least this will give you guys an idea of what the video is about and then I'm gonna now we'll start the video so pretty much what you do if you know how to work you know you shouldn't be doing this if you can't pull a valve body off of a power glide I'm doing it in the car transmissions already in and functioning but what we're gonna do this port right here and I found this out uh, through some research this port here is your converter charge pressure. If you look on your uh, valve body and through your transmission, this will go up in and get puts the fluid to your converter. So what they do, they'll uh, there's other companies that'll do it, but I'm just going to do it myself. What you have to do is you have to drill a hole, and this is not very big, so you really have to be careful. And you're going to put a quarter inch fitting into here. So I need to drill that hole exactly in the center. It's got to go through this little guy and then into this port here. So it's got to go all the way through there. And so you drill your hole in between these two and it has to be big enough, perfect for a quarter inch and drill and tap it for a quarter inch fitting, uh, which I have all the fittings laid out here for this whole process. So I have to find where that quarter inch, I might've put it away. Actually, now that I think about it, I'll have to find it. Uh, Pretty much, I'm gonna do a, put a quarter inch fitting into there. I have to find that fitting. I guess I better find that before I do it and make sure I got everything. But uh, I'll start drilling that and I'll get back with you guys. All right, so I got the pilot drilled. I'm a little bit, I started off just a little bit to the right. The drill moved over, so I went ahead and slid it over. I'm gonna go ahead and take it real slowly, stepped up. And then I may try to just shift it with a bit before I start running the tap because when you do it, there's not a lot of space for you to have a, you have to be real careful with this because there's not a lot of material there. So when you're tapping, it's going to have to go real nice and easy. Fortunately, it's just cast iron, so it goes pretty easy. As you can hear outside, it's raining cats and dogs. I'm in my little engine area here, my transmission area too. And boy, we've needed this rain because it's real, real brown out there. But it'll green up next week, but you can hear it a lot. Uh, this shop doesn't have any insulation on the roof. I just started doing this insulation on the wall so I can put some sheeting up in here, try to clean this area up. But uh, that's it for that one part. We'll go on to the next one. All right, one thing. One thing I want to note on this is when you're drilling all the way through this, you have to go through both of these, right? Well, when I look at it, these uh, dash six fittings, this quarter inch one in particular, really only has a 250 thousandths hole approximately, a little bit more. So my last drill bit won't even fit in there. So it's really pointless unless I plan on drilling these guys out. And then that's pointless because you're pretty much dealing with 
a quarter inch orifice on the dash eight or dash six. So, and ultimately the whole thing is dash six oriented. So you're really not benefiting anything by doing it unless you take change everything over to either dash eight or some kind of three eighths uh, hard line or something like that. But for now, I'm gonna give this a shot. This is what everybody seems to use in their kits. They'll use a dash six hose connecting it to going out to the solenoid. So this is what I'm gonna use. And uh, I'm gonna stop right there, going through the second portion of it for that very reason, because there's not really a, a point to go further and you can catch it and possibly break this, because this is gonna get pretty thin by the time I do this. I'm probably gonna be really, really careful to get this because I have to, when you're tapping that, it's, you know, you're talking about a small amount of area once you tap that out. You just have a tiny bit of area. So I'm probably gonna maybe dremel down a little bit and then get this drill to come down just a touch on this or try to get the other drill to start a little lower just so I don't get up into there. I probably should have started my drill a little bit lower, but you also have this part of the casting is also thin. So they're both, it's gonna be very thin. I think, honestly, in hindsight, you probably could have done a, a dash eight fitting, which is, uh, or an eighth inch pipe fitting, which is one of these, and ran some smaller ones and just tap that. I suppose I could still do that see how it works but I have to figure out how to get that out but I think I'm just gonna stick to my original plan I'm just gonna be real careful and uh, tap this out to quarter inch all right well now it's really raining cats and dogs and Gunny here says I don't know what do you think about that out there Gunny huh too noisy out there for you bud I think it is well so here's what we're gonna do like I said I'm not gonna risk trying to run the big drill bit into the smaller port area there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my long Dremel here and I'm gonna go in there and just clean that one up with the Dremel so I don't take a risk of chipping that off. You start running that big drill bit in there and it catches, you can grab that and bust that. So I'm gonna hit this with the Dremel from here and just open that port just a little bit with the Dremel and then from there, we can start tapping this out to put the fitting. All right, well that tapped pretty easily. Boy, here's all the noise. Mother Nature said, I'm gonna make it noisy for you today, but that's all right. So I got that tapped, thread it in there. Went a little bit quicker, but I think that's okay based on what it has to avoid. So what I'm gonna do next is clean this all up and then uh, get this this is the fitting that we're going to put here and uh, get that threaded in there. Let me just put this here. Get it. You guys can take a peek. It's either going to be this one or a 45 is what I'm going to have to use for this. Hopefully I got my tap straight enough that this thing will miss everything that it has to miss. to work this tap a little deeper it looks like we're a little tight going in on that but it's all right as long as this thing is tight if i can get a few threads on it that's really all that matters all right got the valve body back on give you guys a little shot of what's going on here basically valve body's back on you want to make sure that you get your main selector in you get your trans brake uh, valve in and then the rooster comb on with the spring and the servo tube on as well. Just, you know, if you've done this stuff before, you'll want to make sure that you get all those. I have forgotten this before and had to loosen up some stuff and, and get that back in place. It's very easy to forget it. But what I did is I put this, if you can see, I have it at about a 45 degree angle. I don't know if this is going to be upside down or not. But I have it at about a 45 degree angle, so it angles down perfectly for an AN fitting, a straight fitting. I think this is the best way to go about it. 
because now I can basically take a an AN line and I can just loop it around here and it'll, I did not drill this yet. I should have done that, but I'll just make sure that I don't get anything up in there, but I have to drill a hole right here for the exit for this. Basically what's happening is it's dumping here before it goes to the converter. So it gives a little bit of fluid into the converter. It controls the amount of fluid to the converter and you can use it for a variety of reasons. I'm personally using it to spool up because I have just a tiny little motor in this thing. So basically you run, the fluid goes, instead of going to the converter or a lot of it, goes from here out and then I'll have a valve right back here that will run and then the pan will have it. I'll show that once I get it done, but pretty much this is the main portion of it is to drill this and get this fitting in here and get it at the right angle that you can get the hose. The hose will pretty much fit, sit right along the bottom of the pan and then I could just come up with a 90 right here and the hose will just kind of hang and then go right there. I'll show you that when I get that done. All right, so I got the hole drilled through the case. This is the fitting that I'm gonna use. It's a bulkhead fitting. And uh, the way I'm gonna do it, I think be the best way is to uh, put this down inside. It'll give me some distance. I'll have to look at it when I get there, but I'm gonna make sure that it'll clear the pan, but you pretty much just put these, uh, put a uh, Teflon washer on top, and then another, another Teflon, and you slide this in. This'll go down through the case, put another one, and then this nut, and then your fitting goes on it. So I'll show you when it's all put in. All right, so now I figured out the best way I'm gonna route this is, I'm gonna do, remember I have this thing pointed down at 45 degrees from the valve body with that 90 uh, quarter to six. And, oh, by the way, I forgot the guide plate. I had to put that on. <laughs> Good idea there. Good thing I got that thing at a slightly angle because it actually cleared that thing. I could have notched this, I suppose, but it doesn't need it. Um, so I did a 90. It's going to clear the extension for, I have the deep pan on this, so it's gonna clear the extension. And I'm gonna go ahead and run a 45 here. And so I'm just gonna basically measure this. So the way I'm gonna do this is I already got this one put together and I'm gonna figure out exactly like how long I need this one to be. Tape it right there, cut it, put it together. And then I'll use probably a new a 45, a new 45 for this. But, uh, and then that'll be connected right there. It should not, looking at it actually, it probably, even if that thing's pushed up a little bit, it's not gonna interfere with my dipstick. Um, if I'm over here, if I go on to this side of it, it shouldn't interfere with the dipstick. And even if it does, basically it's just gonna go to the side of it. So it's really not gonna change things too much. But uh, anyway, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm basically gonna mark this off, cut it, connect it to a 45 here, and that'll get me out of the transmission. I'm gonna pull everything back apart um, torque down the valve body to final uh, and the uh, tighten up all the fittings and then put the pan back on and then we'll just be working on from the outside. So I actually, I probably won't put the pan on until last. I'll probably get the, uh, the valve on and everything to make sure I've got it all sorted before I do that. Worst case, I put a cap on here and a plug in there, but uh, if everything doesn't work, but I think I'll be all right. I've got two different valves to try on this that I've used on external dump valves. Problem with external dump valves is they really, on a power glide, they really don't make much difference. So, but they're good 12 millimeter valves, or I think one's a 15. Not that it matters, because you're dealing with basically dash six hose, which has quarter inch openings uh, on, the, on the fittings. So that's what we're doing. And I'll come back once I get this all done, and then we'll uh, move to the valve and the outside. One quick note while I'm doing this, uh, easiest way I've found to put these lines together is you use these big bolt cutters. I just drop them because I try to get this thing pretty quick. So what you do is you use these bolts, you tape it up and you use these bolt cutters. And what it'll do is kind of pressures the, the stainless around it and you'll have to come back like it'll, it'll get almost cut and you just come across with a little cutoff wheel 
and just trim the last little shreds off of it. Like right now, if I was gonna use this one, I would just trim off those last little shreds and you can fit that up in there, pull the tape off as soon as you get halfway up in there, thread it on and you're good to go. It takes, you know, a lot faster and you're not poking yourself so much. So that's one thing I found is to use these cutters. And then uh, my buddy Leo, I think, was the one who told me about it. And then I also, when I'm assembling them, I put a little bit of this assembly lube down in there to help the threads and to help it go into the hose as well. All right, we got the hose all connected, tight, everything on, torqued up. Now, basically, ready to get the valve on up here. The valve's gonna sit back here on the top of this trans mount. And then uh, the hoses are gonna go around. I've already kind of got those figured out. So I'll take a video once I get that all sorted. And then we'll get the panel on, get some fluid in it, and wire it up and give it a shot. I'm gonna wire it up. First off, I'm just gonna wire it up directly to the trans brake and have it come on uh, right with the trans brake. And I'll hold it for an extra period of time initially just to see if it'll, uh, you know, how it works. And then I probably will end up wiring it up with the ECU at a, you know, percentage of throttle or something like that. And uh, that way it can work in that configuration. But as of right now, that's where we're at. I'll get, uh, I'll start it back up. All right, got uh, everything wrapped up, fluid back in it. Just need to make a little bracket for this guy. Once I get this all sorted out, sorry, I got a glare going from that other one. So I just need to make a bracket and probably loosen these up and turn this a little bit. I just want to make sure that this all works before I make an absolute bracket for this particular one. But it uh, uh, looks like I went ahead and ran the power to just this and listened to it and it's good. So I think the way I'm going to end up controlling this, I thought about it, is I'm going to go ahead and supply power with the relay from the trans brake and then the ground I'm going to run to the ECU and so it'll get its power. I can basically set the ECU to shut it off at a preset RPM or boost or something like that so it'll work while the trans brake is applied or if I want to just put power to it under a certain circumstance I can just have it set to be on from 2500 I think I'll probably do this, probably have it come on from like 2000 till whatever RPM I want to shut it off at whatever throttle percentage that I decide. I think that's the way I'll probably end up doing it, but that means I have to use one more output. But we're going to try it here, do a spool test. This is one of the reasons I'm doing this video. I've seen other ones, but a lot of guys don't end up doing any back-to-back -back spool tests with it. And with this being just this itty bitty motor, you know, it's just a little four cylinder. Uh, with two turbos, um, it'll give a pretty good idea of the functionality of this. I do worry that it's only dash six line because that is only about 200 to 250 thousandths of orifice. So I think there may be a, a situation where you run two uh, of those into that port and come out to two valves to where you really can dump it. But uh, guys say they work, I, so I'm gonna find out here shortly. But I'm gonna, for now, I'm just gonna hook it up with just the trans brake. I basically just need to put this, uh, this trans brake wire into this power as well. This was the trans brake activating wire. I'll just run them both into this terminal for now and we'll be checking it. And I'll probably do a back to back that shows it with it. I'll warm it up, I'll do it with it, and then I will unplug it. And so then I'll do it without it, which ultimately is in favor of you know, the uh, the fluid will be hotter, so it spools up a little faster when the fluid is hotter. So I'll kind of do it in the reverse so that I'll have the dump valve on when the fluid is cooler, so we'll get the maximum effect of it. And then from there, we'll I'll try it without it and see what it takes. I know about what it takes. I've already done it enough times, and there's other videos I can probably tie into with this. But that's what we're going to do. The fluid's in it. I'm going to fire it up, warm it up, and then do a test.
that's, I'm not even gonna do it without it because I can tell for a fact. So we're at 240 degrees after I shut it down, 235. Uh, that's after force blue ups. So I think ultimately that it's going to even make it easier on the transmission. Um, let me turn this this way. All right, we're gonna do one last test. And uh, this is just to kind of get an absolute comparison and it should be pretty darn quick. I'm going to do a test uh, with the uh, little 30 shot of nitrous that I have and with this dump valve and see what we get. So please excuse the phone. I'm probably not gonna be able to hold it because I gotta use both hands to do what I'm doing. But uh, let me fire it up and I can set you guys somewhere that'll stay, I doubt it. I'll try to put it right here or something. I'll get back to you in a second. We'll edit this out. Try to get it first out real quick. take this off of here I don't think it's necessary but I'm going to do a comparison with and without now this bottle is almost empty too so it's not very good line pressure but uh set this off real quick and let me uh, stop this capture and we'll just see what kind of time frame it took with the nitrous well you know what I'm going to add this all I'm going to go in and do a, a recap of everything and then I'll get back to you